Hello, this is Custom List Part 2 and in this video we're going to discuss uh, some of the more basic applications of a list and how to use a list and, and why would you want to use a, a custom list. Um, so let's answer that question first. Obviously anything document based you would put in a document list um, and really anything that's not document based you would put in a custom list, so this rows of data, information. So in this scenario, what we're going to do is we're going to build out a simple list for new starters, new employees to an organization, and some basic information about some PDRs uh, that um, they may they may need to, to take part in. So we've created our, our custom list, as I showed you in the last couple of videos. So what we're going to do here is we're going to click on the list icon in the ribbon bar and here we're going to start to create some columns so we went through most of the column types in the last video so here we're going to add in form name single single text and form And we're going to say that this is required and we click add and that should come up here and then we're going to create a new column called surname and we're going to say that this is required so we have uh, our, our first name and last name we're now going to use a new column, so we're going to put in the start date, and we're going to use the date type. Now here, uh, we have noticed when we when we click this, the, the the bottom options here change, and and this is going to happen for every single one of these as you as you click through these different uh, column types properties, the properties of those types are going to change here and that's based on the, the types of data that you're going to be inputting. Um, so we're going to say here that it's required. Um, obviously we're not going to enforce a unique value. Here we have a different type of date, we could date, date only or date and time, uh, standard or friendly format. Um, and then we can, uh, the default value can be none or it could be set to today's date. So we could, if you've got a situation where you're constantly inputting data, and you need um, it, it constantly to be inputted as, as the date, today's date, the date that you're actually inputting it, then you could select this and this stops a user from constantly having to add that date. Or you could specify a date type here. Um, and then here's our calculated value if you wanted to do some calculations on that. Um, so that's the start date. And what I'm trying to do here is, is give you an understanding and give some idea of different types of columns that you can use. So here we're going to put in the four week review. Um, and we're going to leave that blank at this moment in time. And then what we're going to want to do, the idea here is the date is going to go in here and then what we want to do is we want someone to validate and check that off for us. So what we're going to use here is we're going to validate that by using the checkbox. And this is going to give us um, the ability to be able to set the default value. Now by default we want the value to be no and then updated when when it's complete. So here we have some basic information. So by clicking this edit, we can go into a grid view, which gives us the ability to be able to quickly enter some data. So we're gonna start off with a title here. Now this is where a lookup value would be really good because I don't want to have to keep typing in the title all the time. And I'm gonna create a new video and show you how to do that. So we're going to put in the information here. Now obviously when you get to the start date it comes up with this date picker which is really great. So I'm going to say these people are going to start 
on the 1st of September. Now, look at the date type. Now, this is quite interesting because you might want to change the date type here uh, to a different format, and I'm going to show you how to do that shortly. And we're going to have one or four week review. So we're going to work this forward, and we're going to then select our four weeks, um, and then we're going to select that complete. And we're going to then add employee to our list. So you can see quite quickly, uh, once you get into the rhythm of this, you, you can very quickly populate this information. Now once you've finished, just say stop edit. And now your data is, is logged in here. Now let's say uh, you didn't want to use the grid view. So by opening up this new item, we get this new, we get a nice new form view. Now this is quite good for people that uh, maybe don't you don't want to fill in that the, the, the list in that grid view or for people that want a, a, a form based piece of information so here is completing and again we get the same UI but in this in this view but slightly different. Now obviously we don't want to check this because this would say that the four-week review is complete so we're going to save that. And notice when it refreshes we get the information back in here in this in this grid view which is which is really quite nice. And this information is filterable. I have these, these filters here. Uh, you can filter by name or you can go A to Z or Z, uh, Z to A. Um, and the same thing with the things like date. All of the data here is completely filterable. Now when you come to want to edit this information, you have two choices. You could either edit it directly here and say this is complete and then stop editing. Or the other option is to tick the ellipsis here and edit this item, which now brings you back here. and you can now update that information. And finally, there's the items tab on the ribbon bar here. Now if you if you check the item, you now notice that these options become available. And we have the ability here to not only we could view this record to see the information, and then from here we could edit it. Or well, the other alternative is in the item is to edit it here and then update that information. So hopefully initially this gives you uh, a very quick overview of how to populate and fill in uh, information and the purpose behind custom lists as far as I'm concerned once the data is in a list and, and please understand that this is just the beginning once the data is in a custom list you then have a great deal of power of being able to manipulate that data share that data uh, and make that data available in a variety of formats that we haven't even touched on such as search um, and using taxonomy uh, and using workflows and, and it's so powerful but the beginning point is, is bringing the data inside SharePoint, getting it inside this list format and really the, all this list format is is a highly configurable database which allows you to manipulate that data very easy as a user with a, low, a very low end uh, amount of work a barrier to entry for you to be able to work with an interface with this data. So I hope this has been helpful and um, please join me in the next video and we'll talk through some more of these concepts. Thank you. Bye.